and welcome today to Gate of Theories. Today, we're going to be discussing how far off are we from Star Wars becoming our reality. Without further ado, let's get straight on with the video, but before we get in with this video, if you are new to the channel and wouldn't mind clicking that subscribe button, that would be awesome as we are trying to hit 5,000 subscribers as soon as possible, and every little helps. But without further ado, let's get straight on with the video. So, with the new Star Wars film coming out, I decided to have a look into how far off is our reality from being more like the Star Wars reality. Obviously, it's not going to be the same as the Star Wars reality, and obviously the Star Wars reality is set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. But, we're going to look into some key features. So, the first one we're going to look at is spacecrafts. And, of course, Star Wars happens across a massive galaxy, and everyone travels in cool spaceships, so warp drives that allow them to go faster than the speed of light. They go, they can jump places, you know, they do the Kessler run in under 12 parsecs, but what are the spacecrafts we've got currently like on Earth? So, at the minute, the fastest and most powerful rocket we've ever created was created by SpaceX and is called the Falcon Heavy. The Falcon Heavy uses three cores with 27 million engines, which gives a thrust in a vacuum of over 24,000 kilonewtons, which, to be fair, is very, 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 very powerful when you think about it, compared to most other vehicles we've got, or most other spaceships or spacecrafts we've ever had. However, that is nowhere near the speed that we need it to be if we're going to be competing with the spaceships you see in Star Wars. All of them seem to have warp drives and can go much quicker than the speed of light. We, on the other hand, who are nowhere close to even the speed of light, but, you know, we're getting there, and SpaceX seem to be the way forward. They're leading the chase at the minute. NASA don't seem to have enough funding to do it, and SpaceX seem to be on the right path to doing it. They also want to get us to multi-planetary systems and let us travel there and forth. To add, the Falcon Heavy also costs $90 million to launch every time, uh, even with the reusable rockets at the side. So that is A, not cost-effective, and B, nowhere near as fast as any of the spaceships. But our future is looking better with SpaceX. SpaceX have Starship. Now, Starship is going to be put on top of the new Super Falcon Heavy, which will be carrying cargo to space and people, and will be probably the first ship to go with people to Mars. So we'll be on another planet. Now, this Starship is the top of the rocket, so you'll have the Super Falcon Heavy there, and then you have the space, the Starship on top. But Starship is going to have other uses as well. It can carry lots and lots of people and look very futuristic and look like the stuff we sort of see in science fiction. However, they are going to be also used on Earth to make travel really quick to places. So places like London to Dubai will be done in just over 30 minutes instead of the seven hours they take on a current uh, aircraft right now. So they're going to sp speed up the future and these are the ships that will carry us in um, to the distant places. So you know SpaceX have us on the right track but in terms of spacecrafts we are a long way off anywhere near going to the st stuff Star Wars have. We haven't even got nuclear fusion drives yet which are the next possible thing that are going to get us to closest to the speed of light. People are working on them but until we have them at the minute are uh, we're relying on SpaceX and NASA to try and build us up to get into other planets, but we need to get to other planets first, and we need spacecrafts that are a bit faster and a bit more heavy duty for that to be. But I'm very optimistic for the future, especially with missions to Mars looking like they're going to be hitting by 2030. So we've only got 10 years to wait. Maybe in this lifetime, we will even see a spacecraft go close-ish to the speed of light. The next thing I want to think about is democracy. Now, the democracy in Star Wars is very... Um, well, it's very like we have on Earth. They did have a Senate, if you watch from the beginning, and then it turns into the Empire, and then the Re Rebel Alliance get rid of it, and then it's now the First Order in the new Star Wars films. However, we kind of have that on Earth. We've had great empires that have vasted across Earth, if you think about it, some famous empires, the Roman Empire, the Persian Empire, there was the British Empire, and they were kind of like the same as the Galactic Empire, in which they just used brute force to get what they wanted. The British Empire was said that the sun never set on the British Empire because there was always a place on Earth that Britain had owned at one point where the sun wasn't setting. Uh, so, with that in mind, 
we also have democracy on this on earth right now. We have democracy in most countries these days and is the way forward, I believe. Uh, but we also have democracy on a bigger scale. For example, here in the in Europe, we have the European Union, although I, Britain may be leaving that soon, but that is a more continental parliament and they have them across on different continents. But we don't have a world, a world government that activates all the time where you vote in your like member of parliament for example here in uh, Europe where when you have a you have an MEP election for a member of the European Parliament so you vote in who goes for it. we don't vote in who goes for a world government right now but that will be the next step to competing with such a massive scale now obviously once we start getting to other planets and we start expanding we'll have other planet governments and then there will be a need for a world government if you see what I mean but at the minute we're too small of our reach we've only reached the moon and so we're kind of stuck with the space we've got. The distance seems too big. So at the minute we're stuck with that. So we just need to upscale everything really if we're gonna be the same sort of scale democracy system that they have in Star Wars. Moving on to AI and animatronics. Now, of course, we have some famous characters, some droids and some androids that appear in the Star Wars franchise. For example, C-3PO is probably one of the most famous with R2-D2. Now, what are they actually like on Earth right now? What sort of tech have we got? Well, AI in recent years have become scarily good and they've become sort of part of everyday life. Most people now on their phone will have an AI like, okay, Google, or the equivalent of a Siri or Katana that we use every day, or Alexa that we use every day to get basic tasks done, like set my alarms, all that sort of stuff. AI have also been built into other things. There was an AI robot that was made that was given uh, citizenship in Saudi Arabia, when at the time when women aren't even granted such powers there, and it was a girl android called Sophia, which makes you think, but they have become quite advanced in recent years and it's getting scary. Facebook actually shut down one of its own AI systems after it started developing its own language and talking to it, another AI in the system in an, its own language. Facebook immediately shut it down and it's one of these things we've got to be very, very careful of. We don't want an ex machina situation or a terminator situation where we create our own sort of downfall. However, AI and technology seems to be the way forward and we seem to be advancing at a rate that is very rapid. We're nowhere near Star Wars' rate where you have robots that can speak 6 billion languages like C-3PO or you've got robots that can do all these cool stuff, fighter robots. But we are getting there in terms of AI and animatronics and it will be very soon that you will see fully functioning AI that you don't even realise are AI. So we are getting there slowly but surely. We're a bit off but we are on definitely on our way. Then we come to weapons. Weaponry and weapons in the Star Wars universe is something that is totally in science fiction at the minute compared to our understanding of weapons we have in modern day tech. They all use laser guns, lightsabers, and of course we have the big guns such as the Death Star and Starkiller base that have the power to destroy whole worlds. What is the most equivalent we have to that? We have nuclear bombs and their arsenal and the bigger bombs they get, but they're nowhere near destroying planets. However, they do do a massive amount of damage to a planet if we release one nuclear bomb and the radiation that comes off them too. So at the minute, they are our most powerful weapon. They're not quite the same as that, but they do cause a lot of damage and for a long time after will still cause damage. I really wouldn't want us to develop our weapons any anymore unless we are fighting some sort of alien race that wants to attack us. That would be the only need for bigger weapons, I feel. You don't see a mouse designing a mouse trap for itself, do you? We don't really want to kill each other with these weapons, so there's no need to design any bigger ones, in my opinion, unless something is a threat from outside of our humanity. However, in terms of ground level weapons, we do have now drones and a little android machinery that'll go in and do a lot of the on the ground stuff, just as they have in Star Wars. Not quite as powerful, they're not using laser guns, they use standard bullets. Uh, we do have very uh, advanced machine guns. Again, they're all using bullets, not laser guns, but they are just as effective with some of the shots. It will kill a man just the same as the laser guns do in Star Wars. So in terms of weapons, we are a bit behind, but this is an area that I'm quite glad we're behind on because we don't really want more powerful weapons because more powerful weapons in the wrong hands causes a lot of deaths and that is something we do not need in this world. Moving on to our final little area. There's so much we could compare to, but the final little area I've got is aliens. Now, we haven't yet officially 
discovered aliens. Um, what you believe on that, a lot of conspiracy theorists believe that we have already discovered aliens and we're in talks of aliens all the time and aliens visit our planet all the time. That's why NASA's webcam that's live permanently sometimes cuts out and that's why uh, we have such tech we do. Um, but we don't necessarily have, we don't, we haven't necessarily actually got any evidence that there are aliens. Now, Area 51 is another area that is talked about so much that alien life exists there, but until it's proven to the mass public, we'll have to say that aliens don't exist at this point, or well, they're not, we're not aware of aliens at this point. Now, there's many reasons that we may not have discovered aliens. One, there may not be any other life forms across the universe, which is just as scary as a thought of there being alien species. In fact, more scary that we're the only planet with life on at the minute. There is a second reason. We might be the most advanced civilization in the entire universe at the minute, which would mean that no uh, other species will be able to get their signals across to us for us to uh, be able to intercept. And we're looking into the past to most of the universe, but also we're not advanced enough to travel or send like big messages across the universe at the minute to discover or find any of them either. So that's why they are there. They're too far across. Uh, the third reason could be that they just don't want to see us. Maybe we're just not advanced enough for most of the civilizations that are across the universe and therefore we're just like a speck of dust. Just like you see an ant, you don't think it's going to go and kill you straight away, do you? you don't, you're not bothered by it, you can leave it alone, you don't have to do anything for it. And that's what the aliens may feel is like for us. A fourth reason is the distance. Like, there's certain distances in space that you will physically not be able to travel across unless you have infinite life. Uh, for example, space is expanding at the minute, or is our current concept of the universe is it, that it is gradually expanding. And so points are getting further across from each other, and even at the speed of light, you will it will take millions and millions of years to cross. Um, with a warp drive, uh, if we can make them in the future, it may be able to speed it up and may be able to go across, but still there's vast amounts of space that are just physically impossible to cross and so we will never be able to discover it. At this time, we are at the perfect time because we can see most of space at the minute, but the further it goes, the less we'll see and the less we'll know about it. As the further it expands, the harder it is to see. Um, so on that note, I feel like aliens do exist. I personally, I, I, I just can't, it can't be possible that we're the only species alive in the entire universe because that would be really scary considering the vast size of the universe and where we are and how small we are and insignificant really compared to the rest of the universe but we just haven't discovered aliens so until then the Star Wars reality doesn't really work for that so that is our video on how close we are to the Star Wars reality and in actual fact we are miles away which is good but bad at the same time it keeps the films interesting and the sci-fi cool but you know what can you do? What did you? What do you think? How far are we actually off? If you could predict in years, how far do you think it'll take? I mean, we haven't even built a Dyson Sphere yet. So how far do you reckon it'll take us before this sort of sci-fi world becomes our reality? I'm going to say it's going to take at least 3,000 years because I think the rate of technology is going really quickly, but not quick enough for it to be in our lifetime. But I think 3,000 years. But if you guys tell us what you think in the field section or comment section for your newbies down below. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button and share it on social media so all your friends can see. And all your Star Wars fanatics who you have on your socials can also see. Um, we are so excited for the new Star Wars. If you want to see a review also of the new Star Wars, we are going to see it tomorrow, I believe, when this video comes out. Um, then make sure you put it down there and we'll do a review because we are so hyped for it. I can't wait. I I can't believe I'm not seeing it on release day. It's really annoying me. I'm getting so hyped for it. I just need to see it. Uh, but we will definitely be doing a review if you guys want it. So put it down there as well. If you are new to the channel, well, mind clicking that subscribe button. That'd be awesome as we make two new videos a week, including lots of Star Wars videos, other videos from TV and film world. And we do two videos a week. So you're going to want to click it. We do theories, reviews, then and nows, then so much more. So you're going to definitely want to click it. If you're already subscribed and awesome like that, first of all, thank you for subscribing. You make our day every day by keeping that subscribe button. But if you're already subscribed and awesome, make sure you also have that bell button click. Then you'll never miss a new video. And as always, we've been here on Gate of Theories. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you on Tuesday with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Take me to